I want to welcome you to Broadmoor Community Church, a church that does believe so strongly, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm Reverend Ann Cubbage, and I am pleased and proud to be the senior pastor here and to be your pastor. I am so pleased that you have joined us today, no matter where you might be, whether you're off on vacation or in the car or on your couch, please know that you are welcome. There are several slides that will run at the end of the service, and they will tell you all about small groups that you can participate in from your couch because they're on Zoom, or there are some activities for children and youth. They are in person. There are also some opportunities coming up because this week is the first week of Lent. On Wednesday, we celebrate Ash Wednesday. We will have a noon meditation service with an imposition of ashes. And then at 5.45, there is a light soup supper to which you are invited. And following, there is a 6.30 worship service with the imposition of ashes as well. We will begin our all church book study. We are looking at the book Freeing Jesus by Diana Butler Bass. If you have purchased your copy, I hope that you will consider um, doing so quickly and joining us each time we have those discussions. You have an opportunity of three different groups. Two of them are on Zoom. I also wanted to let you know that we appreciate your financial gifts. It is through your gifts and all of the gifts of the congregations around that we are able to continue the ministries, our outreach ministries, our children's ministries, our music ministries, and our ministries of teaching. Thank you for your generosity. And now I would invite you into a time of worship. Let us worship God. Will you join me in prayer? God of love, we need you now. Teach us to love those we have learned to hate. Teach us to pray for our enemies, to love you even in those we despise. God of peace, we need you now. Teach us how to reconcile. Teach us to speak when we are silenced. Teach us to give up power when our power renders others powerless or mute. God of joy, we need you now. Receive our burdens, they are many. Lift our spirits, they are weighted down. God of life, we need you now. Grant us grace where shame restricts us. Grant us life where pain takes hold. Grant us wisdom where we would settle for easy answers. Grant us love rooted in the eternal, the living, in you. Amen. Hello, everyone. It's Miss Liz. How are you today? It's so good to see you, as always. Thank you for watching. So, my friends, I have a question for you. Do you have some good friends? I bet you do. I bet you have some people that it is really nice to hang out with. Some people that you love playing with. I bet these people are kind to you. And I bet it's pretty easy for you to be kind and loving back towards your friends, isn't it? Yes, it's easy to show love to people who are our friends, to people who treat us kindly. But then I wonder, do you have any enemies? Have you ever had someone who is just not very nice to you? Maybe they say unkind things about you. And my guess is it's really, really hard to be kind and loving towards enemies, isn't it? Well, my friends, I have some news for you. 
Do you know that Jesus asks us to be loving even to our enemies? It's true. And it is so, so hard to show love to people who are not very nice to us. Well, sometimes showing love to them can just mean not saying unkind things back when they say unkind things to you. Showing love can also mean praying for these people, praying that your enemies will feel God's love in their hearts and maybe stop being quite as mean. But my friends, I want you to know that if you are ever in a situation where you are being hurt or bullied by someone, you should definitely still go get a grown up involved. You should definitely go tell someone if someone else is hurting you. We can still show love to our enemies, but still stand up for ourselves. So why don't we ask God to help us? What do you think? We can say a prayer and you can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your love. Help me to be loving, not only to my friends, but also to my enemies. Help me to share your love with everyone I meet. We love you, God. Amen. All right, my friends, go out and share God's love with the world. The reading today is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. We are continuing with our hearing of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. You have heard that it was said, you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who harass you, so that you will be acting as children of your Father who is in heaven. God makes the sun rise on both the evil and the good and sends rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing? Don't even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, just as your heavenly Father is complete in showing love to everyone, so also you must be complete. In an old Peanuts cartoon that I dearly love, Lucy demanded that Linus change TV channels, threatening him with her fist if he didn't. What makes you think you can walk right in here and take over, asks Linus. These five fingers, says Lucy, individually, they're nothing. But when I curl them together like this into a single unit, they form a weapon that is terrible to behold. Which channel do you want? Asks Linus. Folks, we live in a society that seeks, desires, even worships power. The one with the biggest muscles or the most money wins instead of the golden rule. Our principle is too often, do unto others before they do unto you. 
we make individual as well as national policies that sound anything but the golden rule. Something like finish them off before they can do anything worse. And all of us have heard, maybe even thought the words, I don't get mad, I get even. These are natural responses. However, we followers of Jesus are called to live differently, to exercise our God-given superpowers. Will you join me in prayer? Holy and loving God, we ask that you would open our hearts and our minds to the urgings of your spirit, that we may know what it is and how it is to live as your people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, we have been given a roadmap. It takes us through the detours around the major construction and into the rest areas of life as we traverse God's highway. And by following it, we will be blessed. What we must recognize is that following this roadmap is not easy. Turn the other cheek, give away your coat, grieve mistakes, find forgiveness. As we more closely follow God's roadmap, we get nearer to reflecting God's image in which we were created. And that is what the word perfect, translated from the Greek telos or telos, really means. Jesus is telling us, when you love without limits, you are like God. But loving without limits is, well, nigh on to impossible. And according to Eric Fromm, author of the book, The Art of Loving, we humans don't inherently even know how to love and must therefore learn. He said that we need to first learn the principles and then we need to practice them just like someone learning an art or a sport. So what are the principles of love? Jesus' words from the mountain, name a few. Learning the art of loving requires that we put our own desires behind the needs of others. Jesus began with the Old Testament law of retaliation, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, which is found in three of the books of Moses. This law was intended by the early Hebrew people as an equalizer of justice, the beginning of mercy, and it had already set restrictions on retaliation. If a person knocks out my tooth, I get his. And if I poke out his eye, he gets mine. Too often, retaliation sets out to get more than that. We want to up the ante, but this law, limited retaliation and disproportionate revenge. Jesus' teaching, however, goes above and beyond the law. He says these words, but I say to you, do not render evil for evil. Now, Jesus is talking about revenge, not self-preservation. And when we think about that, we recognize he's also telling us to not be weak and not be passive. He's telling us not to be vindictive. That's the real point. Jesus wants us to ask the question, if someone does something evil to me, how may I respond in love? This is a high standard to live up to and proves that Jesus' style discipleship is not for spiritual lightweights. Jesus then provides four examples of what it means to respond with love, to not retaliate against a person. In his first example, Jesus says, whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other cheek to him also. Jesus is not referring to a situation where one person is attempting to punch another's lights out. He is speaking of a slap across the right cheek <clears throat> with the back of the right hand. Slapping someone on the cheek was considered a terrible insult. Even today, the Irish often say, the back of my hand to you, which really means you're scum. 
Jesus is not telling us to act like doormats. We should definitely not encourage children to be beat up by bullies. Nor should we stand by and watch while an innocent person is attacked. We should not let thieves, murderers, and terrorists have their way in our society. When necessary, yes, you should seek to protect yourself, your family members, and victims of injustice and cruelty. What Jesus is saying is this, you must avoid retaliation and personal revenge. When you can love without limits, you live into your created image of God. In his sermon on this passage, Reverend Keith Krell several years ago related this story. When Tiger Woods won the Masters Tournament, Fuzzy Zeller responded with some mean, racist remarks. Remarks he intended to be funny, but were only mean-spirited. Fuzzy received a great deal of well-deserved criticism for his comments, but Tiger Woods' response was, We all make mistakes, and it's time to move on. Tiger could have returned the insult. The media would have loved it, but he refused to retaliate. This is an amazingly Christian response. We humans tend to be vindictive. As soon as someone starts a rumor about us, we get on our high horse, we show our fangs, we are ready to do battle. And when we lose our shirt in a court case, watch out world. When we are forced to do something we believe beneath us, when our boss treats us poorly, too often we find subtle ways to undermine him or her. But Jesus says, go the second mile. Demonstrate a servant's heart. Go beyond what is demanded or expected. Shower blessings instead of curses. We believe that we must defend ourselves. Jesus, on the other hand, was not concerned about his reputation. He was willing to confront those around him, but he was not vindictive. Jesus calls us to rise above our imperfect love to God's perfect agape love, the kind of love that brings the sun to warm and the rain to nourish on all of God's children, both the good and the bad, the nice and the nasty. This, folks, is not possible on our own, but only through the power of God's Spirit. Martin Luther King Jr. captured the logic of Jesus' kingdom when he stated, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Following his words against retaliation, Jesus continues his sermon on loving without limits. In my opinion, what follows are the most difficult words in all of Scripture. Love your enemies. Whoa, I want to say. Agape love requires that we are concerned about the welfare of even our enemies, and you can name several these days. This means that we will do things that will benefit and not harm them. In the book, The Cost of Discipleship, author Dietrich Bonhoeffer gets right to the heart of this verse. By our enemies, Jesus means those who are quite intractable and utterly unresponsive to our love. Love asks nothing in return, but seeks those who need it and who need our love. Those who need it most are those who are consumed with hatred and utterly devoid of love. Despite and in spite of these words, most of us still ask in disbelief, even my enemies? The demands of the Sermon on the Mount are impossible, and we will probably ask, can I really do that? But Jesus reminds us that this is the wrong question. The first and most important question is, can I, will I, have I, like Peter, James, and John, answered Jesus' call to follow? 
because when we answer that question in the affirmative, we have already decided that we will obey Jesus' commands. The question then is not, will we live the life of a follower of Jesus? Will we love our neighbor? But how? And Jesus has the answer. When someone gives you a hard time, let them bring out the best in you, not the worst. Respond with the energies of prayer, for then you are working out of your true selves, your God-created selves. Eugene Peterson translated the scripture this way. Grow up, your kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God-created identity. Live generously and graciously toward others, the way God lives toward you. Using Jesus' roadmap will allow God's perfect love to guide your actions, will allow that this divine love cannot be explained in natural terms, that there is something special and unique about this love that is not normally present in the world. Using Jesus' roadmap and learning the principles of love will allow us to recognize that this love is spirit-infused and supernatural, that this love will allow us to love even our enemies, to acknowledge that when we love without limits, we are like God, perfect, whole, and complete. May it be true for you and for me and for our world. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, I invite you to a time of silence, and then I will say prayers of the people. And after that, we will together say the Lord's Prayer. The words will be found on your screen. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we come to you this day having been bombarded by news, by weather, by financial problems, by lack of food or lack of love. Help us, God, to find your spirit, to find rest in you. Help us to recognize that it is through your spirit that we are empowered not only to find hope and love in our own lives, but to offer hope and love in others. We continue to pray for those people in Ukraine that they would find solace and strength and hope. And we ask God that you would be the whisper in the Russians' ears to help them recognize that being a Christian does not mean pounding another country, regardless of the reasoning behind. Help us, God, to know how we can help the Ukrainians in ways that are 
important. And in the meantime, we continue to pray for them. And on this day, God, we come before you knowing of another shooting in our own country where students were killed and others were injured. We pray for their families. We pray for their healing. We pray for their mental rebound. Holy God, it is just an amazing thing to consider. And then we have all of those who are in the midst of other wars, in the midst of financial ruin, in the midst of wondering, in the midst of caring, in the midst of weeping. Help us all, God, to see these people for your children and to share with them out of our abundance, our abundance of love, our abundance of your grace. And we pray these things knowing that your son, Jesus the Christ, was a rebel, a radical, a Jew, and that he prayed for those who were not any of those things, that he continued to share and to show love in every way that he could, even to the cross. And we know that you have continued to share your love with us beyond the cross in small and in huge ways as Jesus was resurrected and offers us hope for resurrection as well. We pray these things in the name of your son as we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you go out into the world, know that you will meet people that you don't like. You will meet people that don't like you. You will meet people that you really would rather not even know. Go into the world being a disciple of Christ, sharing God's love, being the light for the world, loving your friends, your neighbors, and your enemies. Go out now. Thank you.